Mr. District Attorney, starring David Bryan. Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it shall be my duty as district attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. Now, here is our star, David Bryan, as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. The district Attorney knows that crime is no respecter of social position. It can strike in the slums of the city, or it can strike, as this case did, in the vast and wealthy estates in the suburbs. The time is 1.37 a.m., and Howard Morton, a wealthy industrialist, is awakened from his sleep by the sound of his daughter screaming. Daddy! Daddy, help me! Help me! Honey, what's the matter? Bob, he's dead, Daddy. He's dead. Bob, dead? What happened to him? <laughs> Connie, get hold of yourself. What happened? I'm frightened, Daddy. There was a man with a bandana over his face. Where, Connie? Where? At the old road near the lake. We were parked there listening to the music on the car radio. When all of a sudden... Oh, it was horrible. Oh, sit down. Sit down while I call the police. Then you'd better have a doctor. Get something for your nerves. He, he tried to hold us up. Bob had a gun in the car. They fought for it. Operator, get me the police. I, I want to report a murder. Oh, Daddy. Daddy. Honey. Honey. Walters. Me! Wake up, somebody! Wake up! Wake up! The butler said we could wait here in the library, Chief. The doctor's still in with the girl. She had a mighty bad shock. She tell you where the killing took place, Harrington? Yeah, one of the old roads down by the lake, over in the state park. I've got uh, three squads beating around the lake roads now. They'll call us as soon as they find the body. Now, what time is it? Almost 5 a.m. We get the light in half an hour. If the girl can't talk to us soon, we'd better get over to the lake with the men. Oh, here's the girl's father now. How are you, Mr. Garrett? I'm sorry to keep you waiting. I understand, Mr. Morton. May we see your daughter now? I'm afraid not. The doctor put her under sedation. She must have absolute rest for a few hours. Well, we'd better come back later then. Well, thank you. I think that would be best. I'll walk out with you. Is there any way we can get to the lake from here without driving back to the highway? Yes, there is. Go around to the rear of the house, past the guest house and the stables. You'll find a road there that intersects several of the neighboring estates. We use it more or less as a bridle path, but it's suitable for a car. Fine. That'll save us a few minutes. What time was it when your daughter got home, Mr. Morton? Just uh, a minute or two before I made my call to the police. A little past 1.30. I'd only been in bed about an hour. The servants locked up at about 12.30. Remember, behind the house and past the stables. We'll find it. See you later. Mar Brady must have been standing right beside his car when he was killed. Our tracks are pretty heavy where the car was parked. Yeah. I, uh, I only saw the Morton girl for a minute before the doctor got to the house. Couldn't make much out of what she was saying, but I gather that Brady was killed with his own gun. Well, how come? Well, one of the servants told me that Brady carried an automatic in the glove compartment of his car. 
I guess it was robbery all right, though. Brady doesn't seem to have a cent on him. No wallet, no wristwatch, nothing. Yeah, no doubt about the motive. Well, I guess we can have the body moved into town. Somebody will have to notify his folks. Yeah, keep a squad of men out here, though. What do you want them to do? Beat the brush and look for Brady's gun. While they're looking, we can follow this extra set of footprints, see where they lead. Yeah. Hey, hey, you fellas, comb this area. Find that gun. Okay. Tracks head this way. <sighs> well, whoever he is, Chief, he didn't make much of an attempt to cover up his tracks. No, unless he had a car parked along here someplace waiting for him. Oh, wait a minute. Hmm. Footprints leave the road here. This may be where the trouble starts. No, no, they just turn off to this footpath. What's down the path? In that clump of trees. Huh? Oh. Yeah, it looks like a small cottage. Oh, this is State Park land, Chief. Can't be a private home. Well, it must be a caretaker's cottage. State fire warden. You think he could be our man? Well, the best way to find out is to ask him. Keep your eyes open. Shh. Come into the cottage. It isn't even 7 a.m. yet. He was out late last night. Might still be asleep. Take a look through the windows. Yeah. Yeah, he's there all right, Chief. Yes. He may still have Brady's gun tucked under his pillow someplace. Let's see if we can take him before he wakes up. Easy. Door isn't locked. Good. You're in. Bedroom. There he is. Cover him. Boots. Right beside his bed. Huh? Yeah, they made the marks. We've been following all right. Wake him up. All right, you wake up. Wake up. Well, what's the matter? Get up. Hey, what are you guys doing in here? Who are you? Well, my name is Garrett. I'm the district attorney. <laughs> what is this? One of Charlie's gags? You friends of Charlie's? I told you who I am, and it's no gag. What's your name? Brennan. Mike Brennan. What's the matter? Let us ask the questions, huh, mister? Where were you last night, Brennan? In town, to a movie. Why? Anybody see you in there? Friend named Charlie Ridgway. We ate together. Anybody else? Clerk at Walton's Photo Supplies. I picked up a gallon of developing solution. I take a lot of pictures to my own developing. There's the solution on the table. You'll find the bill for it in that paper sack. What time did you start back from town, Brennan? Got the last bus out this way at midnight. Dropped me off out at the highway about 12.30. About a half hour walk from there to here. You see anybody after you left the bus at the highway? Why, yeah. Yeah, come to think of it, I did. I saw a fellow and a girl on the old road coming through the woods. I passed their car. Thought maybe somebody had had a breakdown. I looked inside, but there wasn't anybody in the car. Then I walked on a little further, and I met them, walking, too. I asked them if they were having any trouble, and... Go ahead. I said no, so I left. Better get dressed, Brennan. You're coming with us. But why? What have I done? If you don't know, you'll find out later. If you do know, we don't have to tell you. Watch him, Harrington. I'm going to look around for that gun. A gun? You heard him, mister. A gun. Just like the one I'm pointing at you. So get dressed, and no tricks. I hope the Morton girl can give us some more information, Chief. We sure can't hold that Brennan for long unless we get more on him. No, he didn't have Brady's gun or anything else. There's Mr. Morton now, out front waiting for us. Yeah. Uh, secretary told me you arrested somebody when I called to say Connie could see you now. I'm just a suspect, Mr. Morton. Nothing definite. May we go in? Oh, sure. 
She's upstairs in her room. She's still very nervous, though, gentlemen. Before you speak to her, I want you to know I'd consider it a personal favor if you try not to upset her any more than is necessary. We'll try not to, Mr. Martin, but a man has been murdered, and we must have all the information we can get. Of course. Mr. Garrett and his assistant have come back to talk to you, dear. Hello. Hello, Miss. Hello, Miss Morton. Miss Morton, would you mind telling us about last night? Well, there's... There's very little you don't already know. Bob and I hadn't dated for a long time. But last night he called. He said he wanted to see me. We drove around, then parked down on that lake road. Mm-hmm. We talked for quite a while. You see, Bob was planning to get married next month to a girl named Mildred Peters. She's a, a school teacher, I think he said. Go ahead, Connie. Tell him everything. While we were talking, a, a man came up to the car. It was dark. He had a bandana over his face. You couldn't identify him by his features, then? No. He, he held us up, made us get out of the car. Did he have a gun? I'm not sure. He had something in his hand. I don't know what. I was too frightened. He took Bob's wallet and his wristwatch. And then he told us to stay right where we were. And he didn't take anything from you? Oh, yes. Yes, he took my purse. And then what happened? Well, all of a sudden, Bob made a dash for the car. He got his gun from the glove compartment. But the man was right after him. They fought. The other man got the gun. And then he shot Bob and ran away. Gentlemen, if you don't mind, I think... Just a minute, please, sir. Uh, Miss Morton, what were you wearing last night? Just a plain blue taffeta dress. It's right there on the chair. No top coat? It was a warm night. You were in bed when your daughter drove home, Mr. Morton. Yes, I, I told you. I turned in about 12.30. Servants go to bed, too? Same time I did. I watched them locking up. All right, Harrington. We'd better run along. We can find our way out. Goodbye. That girl can make our case against Brennan when she comes down. I don't know, Harrington. Somebody's lying around here. Mr. Morton claims the house was locked up tight when he and the servants went to bed. But they both admit that his daughter came tearing into the house and up to his bedroom. Well, what's wrong with that? How did she get into the house if Brennan stole her purse? Her keys would be in the purse. Well, not necessarily, Chief. She might have had her house key in the pocket of her dress. That's why I took a look at that dress, Harrington. And that's why I know she's lying. That dress didn't have any pockets. And now back to David Bryan, starring as Paul Garrett. Mr. District Attorney. A man had been murdered with his own gun in a lover's lane killing. Suspicion pointed strongly at a state park caretaker. I had the dead man's mother and his fiancée brought to my office for interrogation. I was with them when Harrington came back to the office with some vital evidence. Harrington. Hi, Miss Miller. Chief in his office? Yes, Brady's mother's with him and um, Miss Mildred Peters. Peters? Oh, that must be the school teacher Brady was going to marry. Probably. She looked like she'd been doing a lot of crying. What's that you got? Well, fingerprints. Nice matching set. Lab crew lifted this set from the door of the death car. And we took this set on Brennan when we booked him. You're identical, all right. Yeah, Brennan's our boy. This ties it on him, but good. I wonder if the chief wants me in there. We don't want to see those. Go ahead. Yeah. The only boy I had left. Brother died six years ago. 
Oh, excuse me, Mrs. Brady. Come in, Harrington. Sit down. I, uh, I thought you might want to see these right away, Chief. Please, Mother Brady, try to calm down. Mr. Garrett needs our help. Uh, I'm sorry. That's all right. This is Mr. Harrington, my assistant. Harrington, this is Mrs. Brady, and this is Miss Peters. How do you do? How do you do? do? Now, Miss Brady, how long did you say it had been since your son had been out with Connie Morton? Before last night, I mean. Six months. I thought it was all over between them. I thought she'd leave him alone when she knew that he and Mildred were going to be married. Didn't he brood about her much uh, during the time they stopped going out together? No. He knew it was for the best. She was spoiled. She never really wanted him. Until she found out he was planning to marry Mildred. Do either of you have any idea, then, as to why he called her and asked her to see him last night? He didn't call her. She called him. You're sure of that? I was there when he answered the phone. He didn't want to go. She must have been insisting, because after a while he said, all right, he'd meet her just once, for the last time. It was the last time, all right. Well, thank you, ladies. That'll be all for now. You've helped a great deal. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Is it true what the newspaper reporters told us when we were coming in, that, that, that you've arrested the killer? Well, I wouldn't count on that just yet. You will be informed. Thank you. I don't get you, Chief. Why did you say that? Those fingerprints on Brennan, you've got enough to get an indictment for murder right now. I can get more than an indictment with them, Harrington. I can get a conviction. But I don't like convicting the wrong person. Now, let's go down to the lab. I want to set up the mug shots they made of Brennan when he was booked. Going to the lab, Miss Miller. Photo gallery. Yes, sir. Uh, what do you want Brennan's picture for, Chief? I want Connie Morton to look at them. See if she can make an identification. Well, she said the man who stuck him up had a bandana over his face. She said a lot of things. Basement, please, Marty. Well, there's a bandana found in Brennan's clothing out at the cottage. Yeah. He says he wore it around his neck. Lots of guys who work outdoors do wear him, you know. I want to stop someplace and buy a different bandana. Different color and pattern. Oh? Huh? What for? You'll see tomorrow. I want to find out how many lies Connie Morton can tell. Because I won't be satisfied with the case against Brennan until we find Brady's gun. And the things that were supposed to be stolen. Miss Morton must be feeling a lot better this morning if she's out at the stables. Yeah, a lot better. There she is now, over in the ring. Hey, what's she doing? Working on a jumper. All right, Caesar. Now back again. Over. <laughs> Fork at a jump, will you? I'll teach you. <laughs> when I want you to jump, you'll jump. Take it easy with that horse. Oh. Mr. Garrett. Mr. Harrington. I didn't see you. Glad to see you recovered from your shock. I had to find something to occupy my mind. Jeffries, get Caesar out of the ring and unsaddle him. We can talk at the house. I thought working Caesar might relax me. I've got him entered in the garden show next Sunday. Be nice if the horse lives that long, the way you use a whip. It happens to be my horse and my business, Mr. Garrett. What do you want? A little help. We may have the man who killed Bob Brady. So the reporters told me. A park worker named Brennan. News gets around, doesn't it? Here's a photograph of him. Is he the man? He could be. He looks like the one. Well, what do you recognize? The scar on his chin? Yes. No, I, I mean no. His face was covered. Uh-huh. With a bandana, we found one on Brennan. Well, is this the bandana you saw? Well, it was dark. But it was just like that one. I see. Well, thank you. Come on, Harrington. Is that all you wanted to know? Yes. That's all 
for now. Well, she took the bait on that bandana, all right, Chief. It's nothing like the one Brennan was wearing. I know. Hey, isn't that a Central Division car coming up the drive? Yes. Well, that's Miss Miller with the driver. Wonder what's up to bring her out here. Oh, Mr. Garrett. I'm glad I got here before you left. What is it? This letter. Came in the morning mail about five minutes after you left the office. I thought you'd want it right away. Look at this, Harrington. Yeah. Hand printed on cheap stationery. Addressed to you. Look in crevice of oak tree 50 yards behind Brennan's cottage. That's it. Yeah, looks like Brennan trusted a friend who decided to double cross him. What do you think it means? It means we're about to find a few stolen items, including Bob Brady's gun. You take a cab back, Miss Miller. Let the squad car follow us. Something else in here, if I can get my fingers on it. Uh, uh, I got it. Uh, yeah. Hey, you are, Chief. Look, look at the inscription on the back. Bob from Mildred. Brady's wristwatch, all right. Yeah, nice haul. Gun, girl's purse, Brady's wallet and wristwatch. All practically on Brennan's doorstep. And here are Connie Morton's keys. The key she let herself into the house with. They couldn't be in this tree and with her at the same time. Why would she kill Brady? Oldest motive in the world. Jealousy. Now we'll have to hold Brennan another 24 hours. That'll be long enough to get what we need. Then Connie Morton can take his place. Well, we still can't prove anything. I'll have enough when I send that anonymous note through the lab for handwriting analysis. But the note isn't written. It's hand-printed. There'll still be similarity in letter formations. We can compare them against Connie's printing. Where are you going to get your sample to compare? The registration blank she sent to the horse show to enter her mount for the jumps. Ever see one of those applications? No. They say, please print. Why do you have to see my daughter again, Mr. Garrett? You men have been seeing her every day. You've got to leave her alone. Well, don't worry, Mr. Morton. This is our last visit. Why can't I answer whatever it is you want to ask? Because you weren't there when Brady was killed. There she is, Chief. In by the stalls. Mind if we come in, Miss Morton? Or would you rather come out? What do you want this time? We thought you might like to know that we found Bob Brady's gun. An anonymous note told us where it was. A crevice in a tree right behind Brennan's place. Well, now you've got a good case. You can stop bothering me. Oh, we've got a good case, all right, but not against Brennan. Brennan didn't kill Bob Brady. Then... Then you still don't know who did it. Oh, yes, we know. You did it, Miss Morton. I oh, did it. How dare you make such an accusation against my daughter? Get out of here. Get off my property. My attorneys will break you for this, Garrett. Get out! We'll go, but we'll take your daughter with us. What evidence do you have? A hand-printed anonymous letter that matches the printing on the registration blanks your daughter sent into the horse show. You better come along, Miss Morton. You're not going to be showing your horses this Sunday. You! Oh. Give me that quid! That's something else you won't be using again, Miss. We'll get the best legal talent in the country. We'll beat you on this, Garrett. It's your privilege to try. But be true to yourself, Mr. Morton. You began to suspect she was lying the same time I did. She... She's not lying. She didn't know anything about it. I did it. I shot Brady. No, that won't work either, Mr. Morton. We've got her pinned down tight. Daddy, help me. Talk to them. Give them some money. What kind of a father are you if you can't help me? Shut up! You hit me. Yes. I should have started 20 years ago before I let you become what you are. Maybe I'm not legally guilty, Mr. Garrett, but I'm guilty of raising her the way I did. 
Too bad you didn't think of that sooner. All right, Connie. Let's go into town. the star of Mr. District Attorney, David Bryan, with a word about the program you have just heard. When Connie Morton's attorneys saw that her protestations of innocence in the face of the evidence against her was not impressing the judge or jury, they persuaded her to enter a voluntary plea of guilty to murder in the second degree. She was sentenced to a prison term of 50 years. Now, this is David Bryan inviting you to join us when we present our next case based on the facts of crime from the file of Mr. District Attorney. Mr. District Attorney was originated by Phillips H. Lord. Mm -hmm.